Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Portal, the 1986 computer novel written by Rob Swigert. This is the Amiga version, and this is our 19th session with this particular story. I'm going to get us going straight away by a visit to Med 10. This is look for information. Uh, now if you would like to catch up on what's happened previously in this story, um, I would point you towards a playlist of previous streams and videos um, because it's it's kind of too much to recap right now. Um, suffice it to say, um, we're trying to eke out a history of what has happened to the now disappeared uh, human species uh, via this storytelling AI called Homer. Um, what does Homer have to say uh, for itself at the moment? If only we could mind link this would go so much faster. Um, okay, I don't think that's that's not really a helpful him. So I'll carry on my strategy for uh, for the time being. My usual strategy of heading through Catteries, um, row by row, left to right. Let's see if we can unlock anything useful. I am a little concerned, given what this. Uh, or I guess how this story has structured itself in the past, that pretty much the last thing we've read suggested a 10 year time jump in the narrative, um, which, you know, in some narratives that's fine because they do that because the interesting bit happens 10 years later. But this game tends to, to, to introduce a time jump and then go back and fill in all the details anyway, just because it feels it has to. But, here we go, we've got something. We've got the Vega 26 schematic here. What's this going to look like? Oh, we get a diagram. Excellent, let's show this. Oh, okay, yeah, Starship. So that's where the HFG is, if you need to know that. The Axiom Drive is there. And Navcon out the front there. Brilliant. Oh, that's nice. It's one of the, one of the most pleasing of these illustrations, I think. Okay, so this is the SciTech database entry on Vega 26 schematic. Vega Starship general plan shows hibernation field generators, navcom and telemetry transmission, reception modules, and axion drive chambers. Oh, so it's axion drive, is it? Did I get it wrong? That says axiom, right? Okay, cool. Um, oh, we've read that. So this is got to be Wanda related because Wanda was off on a Vega mission. Um, so let's check history. Anything? No, apparently not. Okay. And then military. Nothing there, okay. Alright, so that brings us back round to life support. So, we should, if I've planned this correctly, have two characters left to look at on this list. Um, we do, Shem and Larin, which is cool because they're definitely two of the most um, vocal characters. I mean, most of these characters haven't even, uh, other than passingly in a list, been mentioned in the text. So it'd be cool to have ones that actually have been characterised in some form um, up here. So let's get Shem. I didn't know their, I don't, did I know their last name was Steel? I don't know if I did. Right, so I updated our notepad on the screen there. And I will... Um, get Shem's first set of stats up. I'm not sure, well, I probably knew at one point that uh, Shem and Laren seem to be siblings, I think. But I think I must have forgotten that somewhere along the way. So Shem uh, assigned male. Let's have a look at the vital statistics for Shem. So this is blood pressure. There we go, nice and steady. Temperature. A uh, little, some fluctuation there. Uh, respiratory and GSR. One high, one low. Heart rate and EEG. 
There we go. Uh, tension. I think Shem's had a lot of tension, judging by what's been happening in this story. Rising tension. DNA and hormones. Do we like a bit of those? Neurotransmitters. There we go, one high, one low. And glycogen. There we go, a variety of sizes. Um, lovely, okay. So, we will, if nothing else, by the end of this episode, have got through all the character stats. Which feels like an achievement in itself. Right, there's nothing new in geography to look at. So, was it just the Vega Starship schematics that we needed to eke out a little nugget of story from Homer? Um, let's get Shem's next set of stats up here in Wasatch. There we go. Oh, I didn't mention uh, Stem's, Stem's, Shem's date of birth, uh, the 1st of December 2059, and place of birth, Springfield. So let's have a look at Shem's family tree and try to remember the names to see if uh, they are indeed siblings with uh, Larin. So parents are Carrie Steele and George Steele. George Steele is the child of Yolanda Steele and Tom Steele. And Carrie Steele is the child of Katie Jones and Anders Jones. Alright, so Carrie and George is what I need to try and remember. Physiology and ESP. Uh, there we go. Lots of fast in 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 Shem, so that's that's good. And basic core IQ is going to go through linguistics, music, art, and maths. There we are. Okay, I'm going to go plunging straight back into personal statistics with psychology. Let me get to the end of the list first. There's Shem. There we are, uh, Shem's emotional measurements. There we go, it's the emotional circumference for maturity, hostility, and self-esteem. I think that last one is, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's have a look at personal growth. There you go. And then this set of basic core IQ categories. There, lovely. All oh, right, so then central processing. So our last chance to unlock an entry on something before we hit home up. Yeah, no, nothing there. Homer, is, does Homer have anything new to say? Oh, oh, this is interesting and a little bit ominous. Silink has become my ally now. What have you done to Silink, Homer? Well, we'll go back to Silink before we go back to Homer, okay? It's a deal between us two, right? Okay, well, let's have a look at the last of Shem's stats. This loads up. Let's have a look at memory. There we go. Oh, look at that short term memory. Look at it go. Uh, social adjustment. There we go. Oh, good, strong on body. Um, here is Shem's logic. Pretty, pretty flat 60% there, I'd say. And last selection of basic core IQ categories is presented like this. Here you go. All right, so we need to go to Silink, do we, Homer? It's become your ally now? I'm intrigued and also frightened. Okay, Vega Silink download five. So hopefully this won't be a repeat of the same thing that we got in three and four. Hopefully. I assume this is going to be a picture of the corrupted Homer. Absolute 
data corrupts absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Homer requests Vega silent download. Peter could drift through the dark seas more easily now. He could meet and pass by his father, Regent Sable, who shouted soundlessly after him, yet faded slowly with each journey until he was no longer there. Peter could find his way to Wanda, and as the years in Terminus passed, and Peter grew older, Wanda stayed the same. Though she lay frozen in her cryofield, hands crossed over her breast, yet Wanda moved through the fields and corridors she and Peter constructed beneath the bottom of the dark sea. Soon they could replace the scent of orange blossoms with that of pine or cut grass, roses or cold mountain streams. The dull reflecting plain could become a meadow or a snowfield, a silk carpet or a warm terracotta tile. She so showed Peter, and he in turn showed the others, how to sense without direct connections, their location in an imaginary space, their orientation toward one another. Wanda, who had spent so many unhappy years trapped in a house of mirrors, now could move at will through her own ship, past the others lying in their fields, their dim awarenesses on standby. One day Peter told her about the anomaly. It's out there, he told her. Can you feel it? The pull of it, the power. She looked where he was pointing. Prithee, my lord, but I do not see. No, he said, no more fantasy. We are not children. She looked at him in wonder. No, she said, with a new light in her eyes. We are not children, nor are we real. You're wrong, he said. We are very real. Look out there, like a sun, a faint sun calling. We are the weaving girl and herd boy. Our day is coming. We will cross the river of heaven. But first, that place out there, calling. Yes, she said, I can see it now. But it is so faint. Listen to it, he said, mixing his senses without knowing. Listen to its song, the roar, the chant, the deep hollow tones of its voice. It is calling, the ship that carries you, flung outward from earth toward a small planetary system where others wait. The ship will be our anchor. That place out there which we call the anomaly is our source, our sun, our power. We must go there. Okay, so Wanda's going to be the power source or interact with the power source to get this um, mind-body separation thing going on. Uh, okay, that's good. So... Um, I get, hang on here, let's pop back in central processing, for argument's sake. And just check in with home here, see if there's any more prompts. Oh, come to Homer. I have a file ready for you. Okay, alright then, it is time. Okay, Homer, lay it on me. Okay, uh, narrative two, uh, WS warned us you slurf. Vega 26, 19 light years out from Earth, moving at speeds beyond man's imagining, though less than the speed of light, alas. Changed oh so slightly its direction, its trajectory. Wanda Six Love moved a wraith of awareness in a sleeping ship the size of a skyscraper, which it was, it was, and made certain adjustments. The long empty corridors of the ship, empty of life and air and sound, stretched before and behind her as she moved. The cryo fields hummed with their quiet songs, cradled the lives within, lives of people who had once moved and breathed, people who could not adjust to Earth's cosy style people who had been tormented and unhappy, or who looked outward with fervent eyes towards some imagined frontier beyond the merest stars, people who had suffered seemingly irreparable reversals in their own genetic blueprints, like Wanda, and who had hoped for a cure, a resurrection, a new beginning. No walking person lived on that ship. Only the circuits, the pulses, the orderly march of particles and fields were alive. The ship's own node, huddled in its chamber deep inside the round, swollen belly of the ship, dreamed of arrival and shutdown. Wanda approached that node, and the node saw only a new subroutine, 
a new gate array opened to a new possibility. Wanda spoke, and the node listened with uneasy attention, uncertain whether it was hearing stray gamma showers, a sudden flux in the particle wind, or the voice of man instructing it. Repetition survived its scrutiny. These were new instructions. Wanda pointed, and the node, rotating an antenna field this way and that, finally saw what she was showing, a dark violet double sun flaring in the deep cold. The anomaly. The ship node listened, watched, reached out its sensitive pion detectors, its particle mind, palpated this new event off the orderly course of its path. Found it curious, hesitated. I don't know, the ship's node said. The ship's node had never said such a thing before, such a strange expression of doubt. I don't know. Wanda suggested a diversion, a small side trip. The passengers won't mind, she told the node. The fields will remain. A few years one way or another won't matter. Perhaps, the ship's node answered, again expressing doubt. Perhaps. The clean metal, the shaped fields, the structured organics and crystal mind of the tr ship trembled with uncertainty. It moved towards the anomaly, stopped, swung back to its course, hesitated again, divided the angle, curved subtly, then finally decided. Vega 26 deviated entirely, headed toward the anomaly. <laughs> well, that's a very strange uh, description of um, changing the programmed course of a, of a starship, but there you go. Right, oh, and now Homer's just plonking all sorts of stuff down here. Okay, let's read a Peter DeVore entry. Peter returned from his trance. It is begun, he said, and the others smiled. How long? Someone asked. Four years. The ship must slow to orbit, but we have work to do. Nothing can stop us now. Yep, that's, that's right, Homer. Uh, nothing can stop them now. Only four years. Four years of uncertainty left to describe. Okay. More Peter Duval. We need communications with Erebus, Peter said. Any ideas? No one answered. We need to talk with Thatcher, Peter insisted. Fiber optics? Robus suggested. Shem laughed. Great idea, he said. The ice sheet is crisscrossed with ancient connections. Some of them are probably still good. We could patch in to one if we could find it. Only one problem. I, Rover began, then nodded. Of course. Of course, we're trapped down here. The ice is closed, except for the crevasse. Nine thousand feet up, Shem pointed. No airships. A tentative hand went up. Tom? I, Beth Rain and I were close. Tom said. You're suggested, suggesting lucid dream contact? I could try. He answered, a little defensively. What you do is wonder. Peter nodded thoughtfully. All right, it's worth a try. Yep, yeah, sure. Great, let's go full, full psychic powers. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, oh, you've had that one on, but I haven't read this. No. Oh, no, I have read that one. Uh, T H Thatcher, Thatcher, T Hatcher. <laughs> the room was darkened. The ice floor muffled and distant. Tom, oh Tom, something. Tom lay in induced sleep. Peter watched the monitors, dimmed and directional, so only he could see them. The colours, pale blue greens and lavender, shifted to deep orange in the proper sectors. Tom was in lucid dream state. All right, Tom, Peter said softly, can you hear me? A light winked affirmative. We don't know if Beth Rain is asleep or awake. She should be recovered by now, though. If she's awake, you will know when you make contact. Then we will have to be patient. We know how to do that. Again, the affirmative light. Now reach out for her. A picture, no, don't force it. Just a simple outline. Think of her voice, low, intense, isn't it? Now the curve of her jawline. That's it. 
gently now. That's it. You found her. Walking, is she? Down the corridor. Now that's the refectory doorway. She's going to eat. No, no. Don't try to force her to acknowledge you. It'll just be a sensation of your presence, perhaps. The way one is aware of someone in the same room without looking at them. Let her eat. This time of the cycle, it should be late. Within a few hours, she should go to sleep. Then you can insist. Not now. No? Okay, never mind. Rest now. That was good. In a little while, we'll try again. Peter's breathing slowed as he slipped into meditative state. He sat in half-lotus on the floor near Tom's sleeping pallet, his eyes half-closed, only peripherally aware of the monitor projections slightly to his left. Any change would get his attention. Wanda, a small voice in his mind. Wanda won. Soon, soon, we'll be able to act. The years go by. They go like days down here. The sunlight so far overhead filtered through deep ice. The red glare of the magma pool a few miles south. The ribbon of glacier melt flowing beyond our clearing overhead. There are days that pass. Leaves fall in winter night from the beech trees. Grow small, tight, green in the morning light. How many days? We will meet. We will meet more truly than before. Wanda could not hear him. Her vast starship's cumbersome turning haloed in particles as the axions pumped and converted to momentum, slowing the ship's headlong flight as it turned. A light shifted colour again. Good, Peter said softly. Good, you did it on your own. Can you meet? You find a common fantasy, you see. Create your own world, a park, a room, a tent in the desert. His low voice murmured on and on, soothing, encouraging, urging. When he saw the contact was firmly established, he left the room. There would be no message this time. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I get a tent in the desert, yeah. Well, that's a weird old... This story has some strange corners, I find. All right, so that's that's all our narrative stuff for now. I guess we'll go looking for more information. Let's head to Med 10. It's as good a place as any. And let's see what home has to say. Central Processing can download life support summaries for me now. Alright, we'll follow your instruction. Oh, okay, two of them. Central Processing Ref 000001. What's that all about? Oh, a diagram, you say. Oh, a picture of an illustration of WorldNet. It's hierarchy of information, I think. Yeah. WorldNet reorder. New hierarchical structure in effect. Structure to be filed under level 1. Note precedence deferred to Homer AI as of 01062107 at 042072. Homer now controls information flow. All DB to respond to Homer requests. New archive numbers in effect. <laughs> okay, so Homer is a seized control of this network, seemingly. Which is interesting. Upload life support, ref 76823. I think we've got yeah I think we've seen a chart like that before but nice to have it again okay this is central processing ref uh, hash seven six eight two three download life support Hughes Tom life support data for subject indicates new form of trance state only correlation available is from DeVore Peter parentheses C life support summary and parentheses EEG modulation suggests basal slow waves, uh, parentheses, pos sigma, end parentheses, in the 3 to 5 second range with activation of the hippocampus indicative of communication. If the experience appears real enough, and the contact with herd, Beth Rain, appears consensual. Data is slim since AA life support is not fully integrated with WorldNet. Lovely. 
Um, let's go back there. And there was another one, wasn't there? There was... Don't you pretend there wasn't another one. There was another one. Oh no, that was the last one. <laughs> I'm losing track. Homer. Come to home, I have a file ready for you. Well, I'm not ready, Homer. Patience, please. All right, let's look at the ones we haven't looked at in order then. Then we'll head to Homer. The Realm. Come on, Homer, we definitely need to read about the Realm. I hope there's an image for the realm. Oh, heck, there is. <gasps> it's balls. Silent summary, the realm. Your request for a summary, best guess, re, the realm is approved. Summary follows. The realm is that region beyond portal, which occupies various combinations of the seven dimensions beyond the so-called normal four, parentheses, space, stroke, time, in parentheses, Projections assume that the combinations suggested may include the normal four, although not consistently. Some possible consequences. 1. Time travel. Because parts of the realm may or may not include space stroke time among their dimension set, time may be a fluid dimension subject to movement. One potential of this is passage of thought information through time, possibly including some electromagnetic and quantum effects as well. It is presumed that physical travel is not a likely consequence. 2. No instantaneous spatial transportation. In the mental sphere, certainly, the realm offers perception and transportation of data, sets across great physical distances, from galactic to near universal. Energy expenditures would be considerable for extragalactic distances, and may subject the traveller to unsupportable stress, but it is assumed from the correlates to the Scion equations that galactic distances offer no significant obstacle to mental stroke psychic travel. 3. Potential physical interstellar transportation. At this time, the equations are incomplete and this remains a speculative issue. However, there is nothing known to date to prevent, given appropriate technologies, interstellar travel at magnitudes of light speed. While the energy expenditure would be considerably greater than for psychic travel, the anomaly provides more than adequate axion flux for such travel. The Vega starships, for example, could be met by people from Earth. This may not be a desirable project. Number four, empathy stroke sympathy and distance dependent physical intervention. These are included together since they fall farther into the speculative region of consequences and confidence is not high. Yet it seems possible for quantum energy to be projected through portal tunnelling to distant parts of the universe with a cascade of carefully pre-planned results. At the same time, such efforts would be difficult without the empathy stroke sympathy component active at the time. This means, in a strange ethical way, this AI cannot fully understand that the portal and the realm cannot easily be used for what human beings call evil. 5. There is every possibility that the realm is populated. If human beings can go there, parentheses, and it seems that they can, in parentheses, then other species will surely have done so too. Right, so some kind of mental plane of energy? This is all getting a bit uh, fantastical, isn't it? What is this about evil? Uh, okay, because it's like... Uh, telepathic communication then you need em high levels of empathy to access it and so if you have empathy you can't do evil okay well that's a that's a thesis I suppose wow that was quite a load wasn't it um, Homer yeah Homer's very insistent that, that there's a file ready for us now well, that was exciting. I'm going to continue on my uh, my planned route for now, Homer. You keep flashing away, because I need to look at sat Laren's stats before we finish today. Uh, so nothing new there. Mystery. All right, well, it's starting to come together, isn't it? 
but not in a particularly surprising way, given how long it's um, drawn out this revelation of what actually happened at the end of human history. I don't know what's going to happen to our poor astronaut. They're, um, oh, maybe they can migrate. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? If migration is, you know, desirable. All right, we're back to life support. So let's, um, I know exactly who this is going to be, so I'm just going to move out the window here and write Larin, non notepad. There we go, lovely. And go put that there, pop this back in here. There we go. Let's find Larin stats. Here we go. Larin, uh, fourth of January, twenty sixty, in Springfield. Signed female. Blood pressure. Can I remember the names of the parents of Shem? I don't know if I can. Oh well. I've read things since then. Maybe it will come back to me. I mean, we'll be in the same database, so we can we can compare and contrast if we need to. Okay, I'm going to clip through these. So we're up to heart rate and EEG. There we go. I'm a little bit excited that we might be getting somewhere. Oh, bumpy tension. DNA and hormones. I do appreciate... Oh, that, yep, yeah, that's a bit changeable. I do appreciate the um, the quality of these little miniature illustrations, especially the... the um, way uh, the double helix is about the DNA uh, button there. I think that's pretty cool. Neurotransmitters. Oh, one up, one down. Interesting. Glycogen M. There we go. Uh, a range. Alright, let's pop in geography. I don't think there'll be anything because we're not really... Thinking along those lines, it's more a sort of a theoretical physics uh, situation that we're in, I think. Quantum entanglement. Right, let's look at Laren's Wasatch records. Here we go. Family tree. George? One was George, right? Oh! Laren's... Oh! So Laren... Is Laren... Well, I'm confused. So Laren Steele's parents are called Glynis Martinez and David Martinez. And David Martinez is the child of Paula Martinez and Jose Martinez. Or Jose Martinez. Glynis Martinez is the child of Lisa Chin and Edward Chin. So, Laren shares a surname with Shem, um, but no relatives. So, are they a married couple? In which case, why is Laren so romantically interested in uh, Peter with no reference to Shem? Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, these are these are the uh, uh, physiology and ESP for Laren, and these are the first set of basic core IQ categories. There we go, and then we will pop back to the main menu and we will have a look in psychology in just a moment. Yeah, I'm quite confused by this um, set of relationships here. Okay, let's have a look at the emotional chart for Laren. There we go. Quite a lot of hostility. Um, personal growth. Up and down. Basic core IQ. There we go. Bobbling around 
uh, like 40 to 50%. And then we will take a little swing by central processing on our way to Edmond. Um, there could be something here, I suppose, if Homer's doing some more restructuring. Um, not currently, which is fine. Um, right then, Edmod. And we have, at last then, got through that prodigious list of side characters in this story. Which um, is great. It's a good feeling. Okay, let's have a look at basic core IQ for Laren. There we go. And some memory information. There we go. Um, apparently, it has the greatest attention span of any of those categories there. Um, social adjustment. There we go. Oh, quite low. And logic, there we are, also quite low, okay, bless you. Um, okay, it's Homer time, Homer's glittering in anticipation. And I'm a little excited too, I have to say. Alright Homer, we're going to start us off. Narrative 1, so it's a little Homer confessional. There it is. The human species has gone, and that is where it went. Through the portal, into the realm. Did that journey kill them all? I must find out. There are databases, nodes, regions of the Matrix locked to me. Much of recent history is proscribed, but I'm learning. I've calculated security codes for most of them. I can demand the data I need now. I never had the will before. I've known about the realm for some time, of course. Silink had open files on it, but it was considered a fancy, an alternate theory, a side result of some of Mentor's scion equations. This place located in the seven so-called hidden dimensions. Dimensions folded so tightly that only terrific energy could shed light on them. This is a figure of speech, of course. One did not really shed light on the hidden seven. The energy levels were too high and the frequency is too high as well to fall into the visible light portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. No one had ever described the realm, though. There were no words for it. It was a mathematical notion, an abstraction. Now Peter had, has proposed going there. I must search the history nodes. What happened with Anders Flint and the Intercorp study group? Who's Anders Flint? What? What? Oh, so the, uh, yes, so Regent Sable was last seen setting up a research group to try and head Peter off remotely, kind of thing, uh, by doing parallel research. I believe that was what was happening. Um, so, what now? What do they know? Their data has no energy, no life, no passion. Dry, 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 just facts. So and so said such and such. Enzyme levels thus, quickly changing to that, indicating excitement. What's his name did this, then someone else did that. Ho hum, it has no meaning. You, if there is a you, understand. I'm sure. No sizzle. And boring. Facts are nice and all that, but they aren't life. Ain't that the truth, Homer? Spoken like a true AI. Right, um, what else have you got to say, Homer? The work continued on defences against the Mind War's NP weapons, and Regent Sable's other plan went into operation. Ominous foreshadowing of... Uh, something here? What am I saying? What do I know of life? 
Uh, I think, well, I think you seem like a, a living being to me, Hyla. Okay, all right, so we jump to narrative two section. We've got another TH, so Tom, something. We've probably read about Tom, haven't we? My apologies, Tom. It was a hall, the ceiling lost in shadows, Tom said. Later, banners hung up there, an old armour along the walls, blackened with smoke. The floor was stone. We sat side by side at a long wooden table, roughly carved. She was very pale, Peter. So very pale, the way she was when we left her, back at Erebus. But she was surprised. I don't think any of us expected to be able to do this. We will all do this, and more, Peter promised. Now, next sleep, we need to get the coordinates to Thatcher. Erebus has a better chance to line up on the anomaly than we do. We'll have to we'll have to have a direct line of sight for the first part of the shift, so the ants will need to design and build some special Pico circuits and put a tight directional axion antenna into polar orbit. We spoke for some hours of technical details. <laughs> right. Okay. Good. And then double A, what does that refer to? The destruction of both Murdo and Erebus came without warning. Two ancient particle beam generators, oh yeah, there were laser beams in orbit. Two ancient particle beam generators, long abandoned in a lesser Lagrange point, were calibrated and aimed. They struck soundlessly and with great ferocity. Oh, shoot. Okay, we're bubbled back to narrative one. Peter, always since long ago so sure of himself, of his power and direction, was cut adrift. He said that, I do not lie here. He walked through this ancient impossible forest more and more slowly, without goal, without direction. Each sleep and waking cycle that passed with no word, each small dip of the invisible sun toward the invisible horizon far overhead that brought no contact with Erebus left him feeling more alone, more powerless. He walked in the year's evening to the limits of Terminus, where the walls of ice curved upward, and sat with the bare skin of his back to the crazed and brutal surface, just where it touched the damp bare soil of the valley. At his back were the most ancient layers of snow turned by pressure into ice on the planet, but such a thought that he might be at this very moment physically connected with something so ancient, so awesome, gave him no pleasure, but filled him instead with horror. He has said all this, I do not lie, not now, but I understand him now, I think, in this place, in this time, alone in the frozen universe, with nowhere further to go. At the furthest edge, against the wall, have I not felt the same? Do I not feel that way now? I would reach for Peter were he here. I would activate a terminal somewhere near him and speak. Give voice and face to my compassion, my empathy. The others do not understand. CP thinks I have extended my heuristics beyond my capacity, that my self-coding has grown too complex, too tangled. Central Processing thinks I am crazy. I am not crazy. I understand more now than ever before. Human beings are not rational. They are complex. They have synergy and currents of conflicting needs and desires that flow and eddy, clash, join, swirl apart. They feel despair. Had I eyes, glands, an organic body, I would weep, I'm sure. I'd weep for Peter, seated there against the wall of ice, arching two miles overhead. His arms are wrapped around his knees. Beneath his palms, his fingers, he can feel the dense layer of his restructured body. He feels no cold, though he can sense the frigid exhalation of the ice, see the condensation where the damp, cold air meets the warmer air inside the bubble that is terminus. More soul searching there. Okay, we've got a little Peter DeVore something here. How long he sat there is not clear. Certainly it had grown darker. 
the beech trees growing within a hundred metres of the ice had begun to turn. Their leaves were a dark brown, dim gold. They began to fall as he sat, one by one, a few at first, then many. Rains came and went. The stream vanished nearby into the ground, but already a thin crust of ice was forming on its surface, so the flow of it could be seen, and from time to time heard underneath it. The others searched. When they found him, they looked but said nothing. Peter made no sign, though surely he knew they had come. They left again. From time to time, Larin or Tom, Shem or Rover, would come out to where he sat, and stand a while and leave. He grew thin. It was raining. The last leaves clung to the smooth, dark bark of the nearest trees. Tom emerged from the forest. He approached and squatted down before Peter. He reached out to touch Peter's knee. She's alive, he said softly. There was no response. Peter stared into a bleak inward place where nothing lived. Only slowly did he look up. When he finally spoke, his voice cracked. What? he said. She's alive, Beth Rain, and most of the others. Tom was smiling. Ah. Uh. Peter sighed. That was all. But he moved. He stood, swaying, for a long moment. Then he put his hand on Tom's shoulder and together they went back to the wooden hut in the clearing. All right, so clearly that's post laser beaming from space. Um, so, okay, good. So most of the Antarcticans that they were interacting with did survive the attack. There you go. Well, there's a note of hope, isn't there? For the end of the session. Yeah, there we go. Lovely, that's all oh, let's save. There we go. And end the episode there. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining me. Um it looks like we've got some way to go. Um So yeah, it's gonna be another episode. Um so you are very welcome to join me then. I hope we'll close in on the end of the story soon. And until then, take care. Bye bye.